Now we have to start cutting the pins on the left and right side. Uh, of course, I'm going to use my device on my, uh, on my table. Okay, so I want to make sure this is secure, relatively straight. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark uh, where the, the pins will go. I like to actually not measure anything and visually place all the pins. And that's basically what I'm going to do. The only thing I have to remember is which part is supposed to be the white part and which part the skinnier part. Right? You always want to have the, the pins, the tips of the pins pointing towards you. And of course you want to make sure that the, the face is uh, pointing towards you. The reason is the dovetail <coughs> is a mechanical joint and you should not be able to actually pull it out. Right? So it, you, you have to form some kind of a wedge. So I'm going to start marking with the saw by just carrying a little bit the surface of the wood. Then I'm going to put some guidelines with a straight edge and I'm going to cut straight to the marking line using the guidelines. No measuring, just visually placing everything. I'm going to do some relatively skinny uh, pins on, the, on this piece. I like skinnier pins. Uh, you really don't lose much in terms of strength. You have to remember though to leave a little bit more material at the ends, otherwise it's going to chip off when uh, you're going to uh, work with it. Okay, so first marking the pins. I mark first the two side pins and then visually I'm going to place the inside pins and just mark. Notice how I'm holding the saw I have to use the index finger pointing. This significantly increases the precision. I'm not too concerned about do I have the right angle, is it perfect, so on and so forth. Almost anything actually goes. All right, so now I'm going to use the straight edge to put some guidelines. The reason is it's going to be very hard to cut straight down because I don't really have any kind of visual reference point. It's not so important to actually draw the lines matching perfectly the, the saw curves. What's important is just to have a straight line and notice that I'm gonna make a much longer line than I actually need. Just so visually I actually see the lines and I can actually hold the saw perfectly straight. All right, so we have the guidelines. I'm just going to use them visually to, to guide the angle of the saw. I don't need anything more. And now I'm going to start cutting. What I usually do is I cut first all the angles that are this way and then all the angles that are this way. What you have to do, and this is something that I haven't really seen in a lot of uh, dovetailing uh, articles or, or videos is you have to get into a routine, always do things exactly in the same way, exactly in the same order. This is the way you actually get very consistent cuts and produce good quality dovetails. I'm not going to be overly concerned about am I going straight on the line. The line is just a visual uh, aid in order to actually cut straight down. I'm going to use the saw curves. Notice how I'm using my left hand and the thumb of the left hand to guide the saw initially. <laughs> on one side of the of the two uh, pin sides and <clears throat> you can see here some of some of the details I wasn't overly concerned necessarily with going straight on the line that doesn't really matter for example here I'm a little bit before the line and right? the most important thing is as I mentioned to go straight down right? so these pieces I will later remove and these are the pins that will go through the tails to actually form the dovetail Notice that the angle looks very natural because I actually hand placed everything, and including the, including the angle. Finish cutting 
all the pins. What I have to do now is somehow remove these pieces. Uh, <clears throat> this has to be done in two steps. The first step is going to be a rough removal of most of the material and then I'm going to use the chisel to actually do a very precise removal. There are multiple ways you can actually remove these pieces <clears throat> roughly to get ready for the chisel work. The first one is to actually use a chisel. You can basically start chopping uh, about a 30 second of an inch away from, from the line. The second one would be to use uh, a coping saw. I'm actually going to use a coping saw. And uh, maybe a third method would be to use something like a band saw or a uh, saber saw. I actually prefer to use the, the coping saw. It works very fast. What I want to do, and this is very important, is not get too close to this line because then I'm going to scar the piece and it's going it's to show up in the final work. But I don't want to be too far away because then I make my life very difficult when I actually have to use the chisel. Ideally, I will only have that 30 second of an inch and maybe even a little bit less because then when I hit the wood, the small piece will actually chip off. Otherwise, on a tough wood like cherry, if I have enough piece, uh, piece of wood here, it will actually start to, uh, to mar this line and push down and actually I'm going to have very sloppy uh, dovetails. So I'll start using the coping saw. Since I use the Japanese saw to actually cut the pins, it, I cannot actually go down on the curve with a coping saw and start almost at the bottom and cut. I don't want to touch the very nice fine line that the Japanese saw is uh, it's leaving on the pins. Those lines are going to be very important when I actually have to mark the, the pins. So what I'm going to do is start a little bit inside and then do one cut and then start from the other side and complete the cut. Again, I have to stay about uh, 30 seconds of an inch from the line. I don't want to touch the line. Uh, notice how I, I cut using the coping saw the, the insides. I am reasonably close here and here, maybe a little bit too much here. It's not too much of a concern. I'll just use a, a chisel to first get close and then, and then finish the cut. It's not important to get a very nice cut here. You just want to be roughly at about the 30 second of an inch. Finished coping away uh, the material on all the pieces. Now I'm ready to actually start chiseling. Before I do that, I want to show you my setup. I think with a $20 investment, you can come up with something that makes your life much easier if you actually have to cut dovetails. So what I've done is I took uh, a stud from Lowe's or Home Depot and I made this platform. It's about, I don't know, three inches and a half tall and uh, about uh, 16 inches wide and maybe about 18 inches long. And then I got this clamp that's adjustable. It's designed for drill presses. I basically remove the, the bottom, drill a hole and just screw it in. This will allow me to actually hold the pieces when I'm, uh, when I'm chiseling. Also, and this is very important, raises the level of the work surface a little bit higher most of the workbenches are designed for hand planing to be comfortable when you actually hand plane and they are really tiresome when you actually have to do any kind of carving chisel work or anything like this. The extra three and a half inches will help a lot. And since this is a very fast clamp, I can basically clamp things and unclamp them very fast and I don't have to spend too much time holding my piece in awkward positions or uh, trying to, to stabilize uh, the chisel or, or anything like that. Actually, I'm going to do something even, even more. I'm going to use a piece of medium density fiberboard, which is perfectly flat. And instead of cutting directly on this board, it's made out of pine, so it chips off very easily and very fast. Uh, I will actually cut on the medium density fiberboard. When I uh, destroy it, I'll basically cut uh, another piece. They are cheap enough, so you can actually do this. Right. So what I'm going to do is I will place the piece that I want to chisel out on top of the MDF, which is on top of this small workbench. Okay? And I have to set up my clamp, so I clamp it 
reasonably tight, so it's not going to move, but not overly tight because you're going to destroy the clamp or mar the, the work. Okay. 